Okay, hello. Today we are making a video on the Hoka 10-9 and I'm lighting this candle so you have a sense of time. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's about 9.35 right now and I'm making this video. I wish it wasn't 9.35 at night, but sometimes the day just passes and I, I don't get an opportunity to shoot. So, um, here we go. The Hoka 10-9. The craziest shoe, the oddest shoe, the most interesting shoe I've ever run in. Okay, let me give a disclaimer about these shoes, the, these boats. Yes, I did get these shoes for free. They're $250 shoes made by Hoka. They're called the 10-9s, 10, 10, 10 9. That being said, I have no obligation to speak good or bad about this product, so this is just a genuine impression of the shoe, a genuine review. This video is sponsored by I don't know about you, but whenever I watch reviews on things, sometimes I just wanna like cut to the end where they're like, this is the conclusion. And so, um, this is the conclusion. The Hoka 10-9 is the best trail running shoe I've ever experienced. I've run in Yosemite, I've run in Topanga, I've run in, on trails in Santa Barbara, all around LA in these shoes. But objectively as a trail running shoe, it gets the job done and it gets it done so incredibly well. Trail running is what it's made for and trail running is what it shall do. This is an incredible shoe for that. That being said, for everybody that actually cares to hear why I believe that, well that is why we make a video that is a little bit more than two minutes long. But sometimes I just come to find out like, hey, like, what do you think of this shoe? Is it good? Is it bad? And that's the answer. It's incredible. So let me first speak on my experience with this shoe. I've run in a lot of places in it. I've run on a lot of trails in a lot of diverse conditions, being rocky, rooty, clay-y, sand-y. I've gone through technical trails, I've gone through just dirt roads, and honestly, I feel like I put them through the test. But granted, I've spent a lot of time in a lot of different shoes, and I can quickly get a feel for what I like, what I don't like, and kind of how it's performing. That being said, this is one of my most anticipated shoes to try. I was more excited to try this than almost any other shoe, even more so than the Alpha Flies, just because it was different from any other shoe I'd ever seen. You never see a shoe with a chin like this. Well, like, like this. That's crazy. And that's what I really appreciate about Hoka. I appreciate that they aren't afraid to break out these norms and kind of just do their own thing. And, and that's kind of where we'll tear out into the pros and cons of this shoe. But this is a funny disclaimer that Hoka has on their website, and it also came in the box, but um, let, me, let me read this for you. Warning, Hoka One One designed this product as a piece of specialized equipment specifically for running. Think of these like ski boots or as a cycling shoe. Using this product for anything other than running may impair balance and dexterity. So, don't wear these on stairs or while driving. Time to fly. Clearly, not a regular shoe. First, the pros of the shoe. The first of which is that this is literally the squishiest shoe I've ever run in. I've never worn a shoe that is this soft, and I think it has something to do with the area of the shoe being much larger as there's like essentially another just layer of foam on the outside of the shoe that wouldn't exist otherwise. And what that does is it disperses your force over a larger surface area, and that makes it a little bit softer. And on top of that, this thing is, this thing is thick. Like thick with like five seats. Like this is thick. Like this crazy. And I've run in a lot of squishy shoes. The next huge advantage of this shoe is that for trail running, it's very grippy. There's a lot of rubber at the front with very thick and very well-made lugs. They're, they're really gonna just trap you in on the trails if you're descending, if you're anythinging, you're gonna stick in there. And on top of that, there's a lot of rubber at the heel, so if you're landing on your heel on the trails, it's also gonna lock in. And this midfoot where it would just be adding weight kinda is just foam. A lot of high-end trail running shoes have rock plates and things like that, but honestly, this shoe is just so thick that you don't ever feel the need for it. It just absorbs anything of that kind. Another pro of this shoe is that it essentially looks like a Balenciaga. So if you're trying to wear them for streetwear, well, <laughs> obviously that one's a joke. It's, it's not the most attractive shoe. Although for, for what it is, they did make it look pretty nice. My next pro of this shoe is that they designed the interior incredibly well. It's made for you to be able to run barefoot in it. I say that without knowing, but it feels as if they spent hours thinking about how can we make this feel great if you're not wearing socks. Another huge pro of this shoe is since it has such a wide footprint and on top of that, this giant chin on it, 
called a chin, but really is a heel. What this provides is a ton of stability. I've never rolled my ankle in this shoe. I've never even gotten close to it. I, I think it might be impossible. I think if you roll your ankle in this shoe, you're gonna break your ankle. These extra two inches are working to your advantage to average the terrain. What I mean by that is basically it's making it easier on your legs, on your ankles, on your feet. It's small, but it is something to consider. Okay, I've gushed about this shoe enough. It's time for some cons, and then I'll kind of just tell you who should buy this shoe. Who is this for? Is this for you? I don't know. Well, actually I do. But uh, I'll tell you in about a minute and a half. I made that time out. I'm so sorry about this lighting. I just don't have any soft boxes yet. The cons. The first of which is that um, this shoe costs $250. Most trail shoes do not cost $250. Hoka has many offerings that are between $130, $180, and this is $250. That's crazy. Another large qualm to this shoe is that it's, it's kind of heavy. It's like 12 and a half ounces in a size nine, which is standard weighing size. For a trail shoe, it's not insane to hear a shoe being that heavy, but granted for the size, it, it's, I mean, it's heavy, but it also is huge. So it's like, mm, is it a con? Yes, but also it's like justified because of the size, but I'm still making a con because it's just pretty heavy. The only other con I can really think of is the fact that this chin actually becomes a bit dangerous on downhill step running. That, it's pretty specific. It's a specific condition, but sometimes on technical trails, they'll literally just be steps. And when you're running on those, when you're walking on them, the back of the shoe, you're not used to having to step an extra couple inches. And so sometimes you get, you clip it, you hit it, you hit the stair above, and, and it just is a weird experience. And sometimes it feels a bit dangerous, but granted, once you get used to it, you can kind of just step a little bit more sideways, kind of more sideways, step the steps, I guess. And that usually solves the problem for me, but it is something that really shocked me the first time it happened. I got like pretty scared. I was like, oh my God, as I kind of flew forward. But that kind of wraps up my pros and cons. I have a few on both sides and, and nothing too distinctly negative and a few things that are distinctly positive. And so the question is, who is this shoe for? And being honest, it's for people like me. People that have a shoe for every single purpose. Sounds stupid. But it's true, weird people that have too many shoes and the elite trail runners. The only reason I have to say elite is because objectively a $250 trail shoe is only for a very select group of people that want this shoe. It's interesting, it may cause you to want to try it, but to actually buy it is a huge commitment because I wouldn't do regular running in this. I wouldn't do any workouts in it. I wouldn't do any of that. I, I would only trail run in this shoe. And that's what makes it so hard for me to suggest because the fact that you can only do one thing in the shoe makes it very niche. Runners World said it best. They said the normalization of $250 running shoes is getting out of hand. I can't agree with this more. I don't usually read Runners World, but I just felt like this quote was just so true. It's a great shoe. It's the best trail running shoe, but it's absurd. It's limited in its versatility, but for some, that might be exactly what you need. Um, I think I think that concludes the review. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed. It's an interesting shoe, and it's one that I had to discuss. But as usual, guys, I'll talk to you later. Live happy, be healthy, bye. This is like, I mean, this shoe is just, it's nuts. <laughs>